Welcome back to our spring training series with the nozzle heads. Today, our topic is Operation Weed Eradication, which this has been a topic of conversation that we've been talking about for at least the last year and a half uh, from BASF. And this topic really is focused on how to control weeds, not just in year one or for one year, but from a multi-year standpoint. How do we better control weeds? And how do we even have the opportunity to eradicate certain troubling or tough to control species off of a, off of a farm or from a single field? Uh, so Operation Weed Eradication, uh, that's going to be today's focus, and it is a comprehensive and long-term plan. This isn't something that overnight we start implementing every single strategy there is to control weeds better. Uh, more so, it's over time we implement one or two new things. We, we try to increase or improve our weed control over time and eventually get to a point where eradication of a specific weed in a specific field may be possible. That's right, and there's multiple pieces here, and we talk about it, you know, it really starts actually before you put anything even in the ground, and that is, you know, looking at what type of seed or plan you're using in the herbicide trait that's going with it. And so what are you going to be able to utilize in your control methods? And then we shift gears and start talking about scouting and being able to cover fields that uh, we have. Not only do we do that prior to planting, through planting up until the times we're using herbicides, but we're going to continue that into the fall too to see how we did at the end of the year. And that's maybe the additional piece that we don't always get out of it is, is that we're going to look and say, okay, how, how we're going to grade our performance and then that's part of that long-term plan of what can I do in this field here to help us get ready and scouting is going to be a huge part of it. Crop rotation. Can I change something up in the rotation of that field? Is there opportunities to bring something in to break the cycle of weeds? Uh, maybe it's not continuous corn anymore. Maybe it's something in addition to a corn and soybean rotation. Row spacing. Can I change up some row spacing? Probably a bigger opportunity in soybeans than it is in corn, but can I go to narrow row soybeans to help me deal with that whole competition thing and everything else? Can I use cover crops to assist with my herbicide program when I'm talking about weed control? Can I be able to bring something in that's, that's worthwhile that will bring value and bring some nutrients to the soil and also give me some weed suppression? And finally, can I use tillage or do I need to switch to no-till in certain fields? This is going to begin, this is a field-by-field -field decision. There's no one-size-fits-all for your farm. It's basically looking at what works best for this field. There's some fields that may be best tillage, may be the best thing, you may be able to manage that. There's other fields where no-till will be a better option in order to try to control some of those uh, weeds that we deal with. Yeah, definitely know your fields, know your weeds, and implementing different strategies. It's not just a chemical approach, cultural approach, like some of the things you mentioned. And then one of the things we want to focus on is what we think is an opportunity starting in year one to really move towards a, an operation weed eradication standpoint. And that would be controlling weeds on field edges. Here we have, you know, in the background, a beautiful soybean field with excellent weed control. You know, some of the, they had a great herbicide program that we can see, or they implemented some cover crops or some uh, tighter row spacing to suppress weed growth. Either way, no matter what they did, it's clean in the field. The field edge is ugly, to say the least. You can hardly see the field behind it. And then here we have an example. Uh, this would actually be Palmer amaranth on a field edge of corn. And the field itself had very good weed control, but again, uh, the field edge was a problem. And each one of these weeds, uh, basically it's growing unabated. So the seed heads on some of these are gonna be enough to spread and disperse throughout much of the field in the next year or two. And we're back to square A, and it's just a never ending cycle if we don't start to focus on maybe controlling weeds on field edges that we didn't before. And in addition to field edges, the next opportunity we have needs to be looking at weeds that are in the field too. So where we have escapes, and sometimes it may be as simple as just walking out there and pulling a few. When we're talking about Palmer amaranth or any of the, the water hemp species or anything that's voracious seed production, if we can start just getting those few escape plants out early when we're talking about soybeans, but we can see them sticking up on the horizon here. And what we wanna do is be able to be aggressive and control those. Um, in some cases, um, like I said, it may be just as simple as pulling them. Other cases, we may have to make more of a concerted effort and have a crew in to come clean those fields up or whatever. But it's well worth it if you can do it. Again, we're not talking that you have to do this on the entire farm, but can you start somewhere and pick a field that needs
needs to make sure where this is happening. Field edges, in the field for escapes. We don't want those uh, misses or other things that we're dealing with. Yeah, and it, it's something that maybe you have an opportunity to more easily implement than maybe bringing cover crops or changing up your tillage practice. So that's, that's really where we see that at. And I mentioned this earlier, chemical control, it's, it's not necessarily going to be the only way. And especially when we think about a, uh, a whole approach for weed control, it's going to bring in a lot of other cultural practices. There's a lot of opportunities out there. That being said, chemical control, uh, it is very, very important for overall weed control and then having any chance for eradication of a specific weed species in a field. And these are some of the ideas behind uh, chemical control and some of the things we have to keep in mind when utilizing herbicides because we are blessed we do have effective sites of action. Even on the toughest weeds, uh, we still have options available. And multiple effective sites of action, utilizing those in plants, residuals, utilizing plenty of residuals, not just pre, but in the toughest fields, water hemp, palmer amaranth, layering residuals, using the right rates. And Brady, thoughts on applications? Applications are, are gonna be really important to be timely, and you know we have to do that. Part of that is based on one of the earlier steps there, and that's residuals, allowing us the flexibility to make timely post applications. So get a good residual down, it makes life much easier from that type of thing. And then we want to do the best job we can when we're making a post application. We've got to optimize that. If it's a liberty application, we've got to make sure we've got right nozzles, right gallonages. If it's a status application, we want to make sure it's on target. We're not trying to push too big of weeds or whatever. We're using all those good weed management techniques in there uh, to do that. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, we want to scout those fields and see how that herbicide's doing. We don't want to have that just wait until the end. We may have an opportunity to do something if we have some misses or whatever. So we don't want to say, well, I've sprayed, I'm not coming back until the fall. We want to be aggressive and, and go see with those fields after our applications. Yeah, and really keeping our effective herbicides today effective for as long as possible and this is these would be the chemical approaches to helping uh, keep that around uh, but then also some of the other things we mentioned on operation weed eradication being part of the puzzle right well folks that wraps up another episode for us thanks for joining us hey folks thanks for watching the thoughts and comments expressed on these videos are the opinions of the nozzle heads be sure to like and subscribe down below to be notified of new videos and content